Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's Anelli here. Today, we're answering questions for you guys. You guys sent in a bunch of different questions on YouTube and on Instagram. And so I've picked through a couple, and we're going to answer it. So today's question is from Jacob Hernandez. He said, did you ever get to see your pre-draft scouting report? If so, what were your strengths and weaknesses? So um, I didn't get to see any pre-draft reports, obviously, from any of the teams. Um, but I've gone online and searched, and I found some stuff from Baseball America and from a few other articles that came out right before the draft. And so we're going to go through, because it talks a little bit about you know my ability um, and it hits on a couple of my strengths and weaknesses and talks about which teams were looking to draft me, potentially. So first one here we're going to look at is, uh, this is Baseball America. So here's the mock draft. Uh, this took place, let's see, June 6th. So right before the draft. All right. And so we're going to just scroll down here for a minute and start to look at some of these teams. So we won't go through all of them, but we'll we'll hit on the first couple and then we'll look at... Um, you know, the teams that were potentially looking at me for the draft. So number one, this is actually interesting. Andrew Miller was considered the top talent in the draft. I didn't realize that. He ended up going later, but um, apparently he was asking for like $10 million or something crazy. So uh, Luke Hochaver ended up going one here, and that's who they projected out. And then Greg Reynolds was projected two. He ended up going two. Um Brad Lincoln was projected three, and that ended up being uh, Evan Longoria, and then Lincoln went four, so they just had those guys flip-flop. Um, so I'm not in any of these discussions here, and we'll just keep going down. Brandon Morrow ended up going, I believe he did go to the Mariners. Uh, Clayton Kershaw did not go to the Tigers. He went next to the Dodgers. And uh, let's see, we'll keep going. Drew Stubbs ended up going to the Reds, I believe, good player out of Texas. Uh, Bill, I don't even know, Rowell, Rowell. He ended up going to the Orioles. He's a high school kid. Remember him? Big lefty hitter, I think he was. Uh, Bard ended up going late to the Sox or later to the Sox. The Giants at 10 took Lincecum, I'm pretty sure. Andrew Miller did not go there to the Diamondbacks. Okay, now here, Rangers. So this is kind of where I start coming up. Now, I did a pre-draft workout with the Rangers, so that might be why they had me right here. Um... But let's see. Toughest decision in draft day. There's various scenarios. Lists a bunch of players there. Uh, of the players that will that they know will be available, the Rangers have narrowed their focus to Linscombe. Uh, Casey Kiker, who is my teammate in uh, high school summer ball for the Ohio Warhawks. And there I am um, potentially going there. Now, I went down for a pre-draft workout with them. And uh, I actually, I, I'd hurt my hand a little bit. The very uh, weird, hurt my hand. Hurt my hand a little bit at the end of my uh, college season, like the last week. This is a different injury than I had as a pro player. Um, but I couldn't hit when I went down there. So I couldn't really do a whole lot. I ran, and I ran fast, which, you know, that was easy to do. Um, and I threw pretty fast. And they actually had me work out in center field also, which was a disaster. Um, and, and in the infield, I looked okay, but I was a little excited. I threw a couple balls, about 900 miles an hour, and I threw one into the stand. But Anyways, they didn't draft me. They must have not liked what I looked like there. I don't remember who they ended up taking. Um, uh, Stephen King, I don't believe. I don't remember who the Cubs took. But anyways, now at 14, this is where I get back into it. So I thought I was going to the Blue Jays, except for when I woke up the morning of the draft. So I was at 14 in most of the mock drafts. Um, and so this says Toronto was prepared to draft Antonelli, but now they're hot and heavy for Snyder. And they, they ended up taking Travis Snyder. Um, so I thought I was going to the Blue Jays. Everyone had me kind of projected there. Didn't happen. Then the Nationals went. Then the Brewers. And then the Padres. And this is where they took me. So new vice president of scouting and player development, Grady Fuson. Uh, likes for fine college players like me and Sink Bill. Sink Bill is my teammate in Cape Cod. And Andrew Carpenter. Uh, also interest in Parmalee. Blah, blah, blah. They end up taking me. All right. Um, let's see who else. Chris Marrero with the Phillies. So I had no connections with the Phillies. My next connection, if we just keep going down here, is not with any of these guys. Not with the Astros. It was with the Red Sox. Where are the Red Sox? Here are the Red Sox. 
So with consecutive picks, Boston will likely grab one hitter, one pitcher, plays athleticism, or well, places athleticism would be a nice fit. They ended up, I think they did take place, I believe. They'll also consider Antonelli. So I actually had a couple discussions with the Red Sox, and um, they were talking about making me a catcher if I got drafted by them. So it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so those were kind of the main teams that were looking at me, and then obviously the Padres took me. Max Scherzer, he went a lot higher than 30th. That would have been a nice pick for the Cardinals if they took him at 30, but he ended up going higher than that. Okay, so that's Baseball America. So now here is another article. So this is um, Draft Tracker. This is a Yankees uh, website. And so they're talking about if I could potentially go in the top 10. So this is more dedicated just to me. So this will give you a little bit more of my strengths and weaknesses or perceived strengths and weaknesses. So um, let's kind of go through it real quick. Matty tonight with Wake Forest. Teams are said to love his athleticism and five-tool potential. Um, but they also have to be quite fond of his overall performance this spring for the Demon Deacons. Entering the season, most scouts agreed that Antonio was a first-rounder. After a strong showing in 2016, he has now pushed himself at least into top 10 discussions. So um, just for a little bit of background for you guys, I had always been considered like an athletic uh, player that had good strike zone awareness, uh, good like bat-to-ball skills, so put the ball in play, um, could run pretty well, could be a versatile defender, although I was not a great defender, but I could potentially play multiple positions, I guess, because of my athleticism. Uh, the big question mark was my power. I had two home runs my freshman year and five my sophomore year, so I hadn't hit a ton of homers. And so my big thing going into that last season right here was to um, hit more homers. So I put on a lot of weight. I'd always worked out hard in the weight room, but I tried to eat a lot more to be even bigger. I was probably about 195 to 200, somewhere in that range, probably 195 my sophomore year. And uh, my junior year, I opened up the season. I remember I weighed in before the game at 216, so I got a lot bigger. And it helped me hit a lot more home runs. So entering the second weekend, Antonio is batting 332 um, with 11 home runs and 36 RBI. So I actually, I, I actually went super cold like the last month of the year. One thing I did, I put on a ton of weight, but then I, I didn't, I didn't really know how to keep the weight on. I lost a lot of weight during the year, so my strength really went down probably the halfway through the year, and I just stopped hitting home runs. Um, and so I wish I had done a better job of working out. I mean, I worked out during the year, but I didn't work out as heavy, and I didn't eat. For some reason, during seasons, I could not eat a lot of food, and um, and so I lost a lot of weight. Uh, I have a team leading stolen, uh, 14 stolen bases, being caught three times. I've uh, done an excellent job at third base. That's probably not true. I made I had my worst defensive year my junior year. Um, oh, here's some quotes from me. I haven't read these quotes yet. Right now, I feel like the season's going well, Anton. I said confidently. I've had some ups and downs, but I think overall I've been more consistent so far this year than my first two seasons. I just want to try to finish up the year strong and try to help us play as far into the postseason as possible. Okay, and then talks about statistics and what separates me from other college players who put up good numbers is my athleticism. It's the it's exactly that trait that had teams, specifically the Giants, considering early in the first round. I never talked to the Giants, so I have no idea where they got that from. I do think having athleticism helps all aspects of my game, both offense and defense. I can play a lot of different positions. Playing them well is a different question. Um, in the infield, I could play outfield because they can run a little bit, which always helps. Playing a lot of sports my whole life. Growing up has helped out my baseball skills in a lot of ways. So far, I've heard a lot of different things that could happen on draft day. But it's still very early. And we have almost another month left of baseball. So a lot can change. Um, I think that if I, you know, I really did kind of slump the last month of the year. I talked about losing a lot of weight and um, I just didn't have a great last month. I think if I continued on my pace, I think I probably probably would have been a top 10 pick. Um, but I was struggling. At the end of the year, I was literally like, just let the season end, please. Because I don't know why. I just I just kind of went in a slump and I couldn't really figure it out. You know, I was, I was just bad. <laughs> um, I really, at this point, do not have any expectations for where I'll be drafted. I said that, but I expected to be drafted in the first round. Um, I'm just looking forward to starting my professional career with whichever team picks me in June. Let's see. Well, I've played in front of scouts for a long time. 
I had to go through it a lot my senior in high school and during my summer season during my high school year. When I got to college playing in the ACC, there are always lots of scouts around at games watching, so I really feel comfortable playing in front of them. Whether there are scouts at the game or not, I'm going to play the, ga- the way I play the game. Uh, so nothing really changes for me. So I actually, that is a true statement. Sometimes I lie when I, or I just fib a little bit when I'm doing these interviews, but I actually didn't really care who was watching me, who wasn't. And you do kind of get used to it, you know, playing in front of scouts in high school and then throughout college. So, okay, here's me talking more about myself. Um, I think the first thing I would say is that I play the game hard. I play the it the way it was meant to be played, that is probably the most important thing. And no matter how good or bad things are going for me during a particular game, I always try to play the game the right way. Uh, let's see. I don't really, I didn't know who I compared to. Oh, I dropped a Derek Jeter quote or a, a, a Derek Jeter comparison. Whoops. Uh, a lot of people ask me for a comparison. I never really know what to say. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure exactly who I resemble in the big leagues, but I do know that I try to do a lot of the stuff that, say, a Derek Jeter does. What that stuff is, I have no idea. I don't know what I was talking about. Apparently, Matt was talking about Road to the Show Matt and not real Matt because um, I don't do a whole lot of things Derek Jeter does. I guess he was talking about just playing the game hard. That's my assumption. Or I was talking about it, not he. Um, oh, here we go. I explained it. He barely ever misses a game and always gives everything he has to help his team win. He can do all the little things that you need a guy to do. He can move a runner, get the big base hit, steal a bag for you. There really isn't anything he isn't able to do on the baseball field. Okay, pretty cool. All right. So um, those those are the kind of the two big things I found as far as pre-draft stuff and looking at some of my strengths and weaknesses from other people, not just me. Uh, so hopefully that helps you guys out. If anyone else finds any other articles, I know looking back at 2006, there still aren't there aren't a ton of articles up there, at least that I could find. So let me know if you guys have more questions in the comment section below, and I'll throw them all up and uh, answer them. That's all we got. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later.